Hi, so today I'm going to be talking about bronze work during the uh, Shang Dynasty. So my questions are, how did the people of the Shang Dynasty come about bronze work? What was their process? What tools did they use? What did they symbolize? And did it have a big impact on their culture? I'm not going to talk so much about that last question just because I have so much to say, not enough time to say it. Um, but the quick answer is yes, it did. Okay, so in 17,000 BC, or around that time, is when the Bronze Age started uh, near the Yellow Rivers. We know that's where a lot of ancient Chinese history happened. So bronze was very significant during this time because of the agricultural revolution. People were able to specialize in different jobs and one of those was bronze work and people who did bronze work were making things like bells, drums, weaponry, and what I'm primarily going to be talking about are vessels. Now before I get into vessels, I do want to reiterate how important bronze was for war. So bronze is a lot stronger and it's a lot more efficient than stone. So the Shang people had a lot more of an advantage when it came to war and when they were in war. Okay, vessels, my favorite part. How were they made? Um, the Shang people were very advanced when it came to this type of technology and they had this technique called the piece mold technique. So they had um, clay models of a vessel which were pre-fired and they took other pieces of clay to put on top of it. They would cut those pieces, take them off of the model, put them in the fire, take them out, put them back together, and they have this hollow section now where they can pour the bronze into. So it's a little bit time consuming as you can guess um, and you know people would change it a little bit depending on what they're making. There's a lot of different um, they all look different. None of them are the same. They're all very unique in their own way. Uh, but the designs on them um, were imprinted from the model. So they didn't carve any of the designs. Um, and not all of the structures were heavily designed, but most of them were. And what most of them had on them were different animals. And every single design on them, as far as we know, did signify something. And most of the time, it had to do with their religion, so gods, goddesses, heaven. Um, for example, birds signified the distance between earth and heaven because of their wings and they could fly. So I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, so who used them? What were they used for? And what did they symbolize? So we talked a little bit about what the design symbolized, but not so much about what the vessels themselves symbolized. So most of the people who handled these vessels were of course the people who made them and the warriors, but also people of power, people with a lot of wealth, people who were well respected, so mostly royal families, right? So there's a clear class division when it comes to these and um, more specifically when you look at people's tombs and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but they were used for sacrificial um, practices and rituals uh, regarding death, of course. <laughs> Sacrifices. All right, so people would sacrifice animals um, and humans. And when people were burying dead people, either, whether it was someone who was sacrificed, an animal sacrifice, or someone very important, they would bury vessels with them. And sometimes they had things like wine in them or different foods. Um, you know, they're hollow, they're vessels, so you can put stuff in them. Um, and why did they do this? Because they're so religious um, that they wanted to contact their gods and their goddesses. But from Earth, um, at least in their religion, they can't contact they can't contact them from um, being alive. So, but their ancestors could. So they really wanted to nourish the dead um, in hopes that when they meet their gods and goddesses, they would tell them to give their people good luck, which makes sense um, to me, at least. <laughs> And there's a lot of evidence of this. Um, for example, Fu Hao uh, was a very influential person, um, and she had over 440 bronze vessels in her tomb. And now if you look at a very average person in that society, they either had very little to no bronze vessels. So that's how we can see this difference of hierarchy. Um, so... The bronze vessels were very, very, very um, uh, helpful for us to learn about their culture. Um, going back a little bit to the designs, they actually had also writing in them. And archaeologists today can go back and decode those and 
um, which is, I find really cool. There was one of these, there was one particular structure. It was of a um, elephant. I'm going to wrap up in a minute, but it was of an elephant. And on the inside, it was one of the um, leaders writing to another leader, giving him this vessel. So it was symbolized power and him handing power to someone else. So there's so much more I can say, but I'm already over by a couple seconds and I don't want to keep you guys for too much longer. But I definitely recommend learning more about bronze work. It's very, very interesting. Um, yeah. All right. So bye. <laughs>